Mm. Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Sin City Preacher. Uh, please call me Brother Luke. I want to try to address two issues uh, in this video. Uh, one is I, I've made the decision to um, eliminate from my vo vocabulary the word gospel. And two is uh, I want to show that the um, s salvation, the, the message of our salvation through faith alone in Christ alone, this is not limited to uh, one particular verse in the Bible or even one particular writer, particularly uh, the Apostle Paul. So I want to accomplish those two things in this video, but uh, the word uh, gospel, uh, I've kind of put it in the category that I put the word repent. I think that word repent has been misused and even uh, hijacked by people so that they can um, tell you that repent means you've got to stop your sinning to get saved. And repent does not mean that for salvation. It means that we need to change our mind about how we get saved and reject the idea that we can be saved through religion or our own, or our own efforts and change our mind and understand and accept that we need Jesus Christ as our Savior for our salvation. Uh, so, and now I'm, I'm encountering a similar problem with the word gospel. I think that uh, some people are using the word gospel and kind of hijacking it and, and uh, putting it in a box and uh, using it almost as a, a creed and a code that has to be recited for salvation. So uh, I hope I can uh, resolve this, uh, these two questions now. Uh, first, let's look at uh, something Jesus said uh, after he rose from the dead on the road to Emmaus in Luke 25. It says, uh, Jesus, uh, then, then he said unto them, O fools, slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And then later on, these men recounted this, what Jesus had done, and they said, he opened to us the scriptures. So what happened there is that, see, uh, at that point, there were no gospel accounts written. There were no epistles written by Paul or Peter or John or anybody else. Uh, the scriptures were what was called the Law and the Prophets. It's the Old Testament books. Those were the scriptures. Jesus went through those scriptures, the things that were prophesied about him, and reviewed them with the men to show all of this has been fulfilled. And so what I want to show you is that the, uh, the message for our salvation, that uh, we're, we're saved because of our faith in Jesus atoning death for our sins. Uh, that uh, is not limited to uh, one verse or one particular uh, writer in the Bible. It, you'll find it all through the Old Testament and through the New Testament too. So Jesus uh, went through the scriptures uh, and that had to be in the Old Testament. And now Paul did the same thing. If we go to Acts 17, it says um, when Paul went to a synagogue of the Jews and Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures. Now again, Paul hadn't written any letters. The gospel accounts had not been written. The scriptures referred to here is the Old Testament. Paul used the Old Testament scriptures to show them that Jesus was this Christ who died for our sins. Uh, it goes on to say, opening, Paul, opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus whom I preach unto you is Christ. So, Paul was declaring that the things that were written in the Old Testament, that uh, God would have a son, he'd, be, he'd come to the world and he'd die for our sins. You'll find this in uh, uh, Isaiah 53 and the, uh, the 22nd Psalm. Uh, you know, there, there's very, very clear explanations 
of uh, Jesus' death and that Jesus' death for our sins, the atonement and the resurrection, it's all in the Old Testament. So Paul was using this Old Testament saying what was written in the Old Testament, it's, it's come true now. And Jesus is the Christ, the one that uh, was prophesied in the Old Testament to die for our sins. Okay, uh, let's take a look at uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15. And it says uh, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. You see, even Paul in 1 Corinthians is saying this was already according to the scriptures. In other words, the Old Testament already wrote about it. This is not some brand new revelation that was that was just just came about. No, it was in the Old Testament all along. Paul Paul says Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he ra was raised on the third day. Again, Paul says according to the scriptures. Paul is saying it's already been written about in the scriptures. And now we also have John the Baptist. Uh, he, it says in John chapter 1, verse 29, John the Baptist says, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. You see, John the Baptist declared that Jesus, he was the one that was going to announce the coming of this Messiah, this Savior. And... Um, so John the Baptist declared that Jesus is the one that was written about in the Old Testament that would come to save the world. And he's called, John the Baptist is called the Lamb of God. Why? Because lambs were sacrificed for sins by the Jews. And so he was, Jesus was sacrificed on the cross, cross for sins. And he says, which taketh away the sin of the world. So John the Baptist was declaring that Jesus is the one who would die and pay for the sins of the world. Now, isn't that the good news? Isn't that the good news that Christ died for our sins, our faith in his death on the cross for our salvation? Uh, and then if we go to, uh, again, in the book of John. Now, this is not a Pauline letter. The book, the book of John, the Gospel of John. Uh, Jesus asked this question. Uh, answers this question from the Jews. They say, what must we do to do the works God requires? So the Jews were trying to work their way through religion and get justified with God. But Jesus answered, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he sent. To believe in the one he sent. Well, God sent his only begotten son, so that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So Jesus was saying, what God requires of you is to believe in the one God sent, me. I, I'm the one he sent to die for your sins. So, uh, it, here, this is in the gospel account, of jo uh, John's gospel account. It's not a Pauline letter. Now, we also go to John 3.36. It says, Jesus speaking here, I believe, it says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Believeth on the Son, this is talking about everlasting life, that's salvation. So it's saying right here in the book of John, you get salvation by believing on the Son. Believing on the Son, that's the Son of God, believing on him for your salvation. And again in John, now some people will say, well, you you can't use these. These, this is because these are not uh, uh, Paul's letters. So you can't. They can't be used. Uh, so, John three three sixteen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now, if you want to know what good news is, I say John three sixteen is the good news. The good news that. For God so loved the world, God loved us so much, that he gave his only begotten Son, that's Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Savior, that whoever believeth in him, in Jesus, should not perish. We believe in him how? We believe in him for our salvation, because he died for our sins. But, but instead of perishing in hell, we have everlasting life. Now that's in 
the book of John. If we go to the book of Mark, 10.45, it says, uh, Jesus said, I came to give my life a ransom for many. So here this is, before Paul wrote a letter, in the book of Mark, Jesus himself is saying why he came. He came to give his life as a ransom for many. Isn't that the good news? Isn't that what saves us? Believing that Jesus gave his life as a ransom for us, for our salvation? That's in the book of Mark. How about in the book of Acts? Is this good news there? Well, Acts 16, 30, 31, says, a man says, Sir, what, what must I do to be saved? Asking the Apostle Paul. And Paul says, and they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe on him. That means you believe on him for salvation. You depend on Jesus to save you. He died for your sins. Trust him for your salvation. That's all that's required. Now that's in the book of Acts. Paul hadn't written a letter yet. We go to 1 John, an epistle that some say should, the, uh, they say that the salvation is not found in, in uh, 1 John. But it says in 2 2, He, Jesus, is the propitiation for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Now, propitiation is a big word, but just means that his death on the cross served as a sufficient payment for our sins. It's paid in full. Uh, and it says, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. So Jesus paid for the sins of the whole world as he died on that cross. And that is found in 1 John. It's not a Pauline letter. So the point I want to make here is really very, very simple. That uh, let's not pigeonhole people and, and require that uh, they... Uh, um, they go to one particular verse, like let's say 1 Corinthians 15, 3 or 4, and say that that's what you have to believe. You have to re almost recite it as a creed. You have to state it as an oath or you're not saved. See, you see, uh, salvation is, is not the... Um, we've got to get off this word gospel and understand the meaning of the word gospel. It's the good news. It's, it's, the good news is an announcement. It's not what saves us. The good news does not save us. The Savior saves us. Jesus Christ saved me. The gospel, the good news, the, the message, none of that saved me. That's just telling me the good news, that Christ died for my sins. And when I trust Jesus as my Savior, Jesus saves me. So uh, I'm training myself now to not use the word gospel, but instead use the word, the term of good news. And uh, I just want everybody to know that this good news can be found throughout the Bible. Old Testament, the gospel accounts, uh, Paul's letters. But what Paul did is he summed it up and clarified it and made it very concise and clear so that we couldn't have any more confusion. All right? All right. I look forward to your comments. Thank you.